I remember round about the 1980s when Mrs. Puzzle Boy and I think Mr. Tobaccoala came to see me and they asked me if they, if I felt that a multiple sclerosis society should be formed and whether it would be of any aid to patients with multiple sclerosis. Um, I was surprised why they wanted to go and do some social work in this disease. And I told them that whereas epilepsy, strokes, infections of the nervous system are uh, much more prevalent and requiring societies to help the patients suffering from these diseases, why multiple sclerosis, which at that point of time was believed to be a rare disease in India. Um, they were not impressed with my argument and they said doesn't matter if there are a few patients but I want, we want to put up this social service. So I said fine if that's what your wish is, go ahead. Um, at that stage I was treating a young man, it must have been 25, 30 or so and uh, he was brought to me for difficulty in walking, double vision and other things. And very regrettably I diagnosed multiple sclerosis in this patient. And in some ways I felt very sad because there was nothing I could do to prevent the progress of the disease. His wife Sheila, Sheila Chitness, came along with him and I advised her that since you are Husband is affected like this. So uh, Mrs. Chitnis went along and saw Mrs. Fazalbai. And uh, the society was formed, constitution was in place, and they started functioning. There were very few patients in the beginning, so I'm sure the membership of the society, which would possibly be of patients and their relatives, and some socially minded persons uh, was clearly very small. And over the years, their activity got expanded. And as more patients, more social workers joined in, the society grew rapidly. Um, it was the first society in India by way and it was the initiative that they had taken led to similar societies being formed in other parts of India. So today there are multiple society, uh, sclerosis societies in many cities. Today they have so many societies all over India, mostly in principal cities, uh, certainly Delhi, Pune, uh, Madras, Chennai and uh, each of these societies has got increasing membership. So you may well ask me why? If the disease was rare, suddenly what's happened? And the answer is that over the decades that have gone, since the 80s, the disease has immensely increased in frequency. And I noticed this about 15 years ago, when I was suddenly seeing more patients with this disease 
than ever before. It was becoming quite clear that the numbers were increasing. And uh, as I said, the reason given is that diagnostic facilities had immensely increased over the last 20, 30 years, especially the MRI scan, which was now considered an absolute equipment for confirming the diagnosis of MS and also in the management of the patient and the prognosis depending upon what is seen in the MRI. Any case, um, ours is not the only country in which it has increased. It has been seen in other countries too, of the West, in Canada, where the numbers were always very high, but they have now become more. Um, the reason, I'm not sure why, I'm not clear why. Um, I'm sure there are experts and uh, specialists in this disease and research workers who are looking into this thing. Now, just let me give you a few figures. In India, the rates were supposed to be about five patients in 100,000 less. One to five patients per 100,000. Whilst in Europe, they would be ranging in the, uh, in the, they would be ranging to about 30 to 40 per 100,000. And in Scandinavian countries, even 100 patients per 100,000 would be the correct figure. Um, currently, we don't know exactly what the position is about India because honestly no research work has been done. I have not commented on the work which this society has been doing because I do wish to congratulate them because they have taken all kinds of activities to support the cause of patients with multiple sclerosis and more importantly, the relatives, the carers who have to bear the burden as the disease is disabling and the loved one suffering from it would be handicapped, disabled and needing more and more support. Regrettably with this disease, the lifespan is also short. So the tensions and the stress in the family is there. And this is where the society and the workers in the society come in. Because they have constantly taken care to help in every way. For example, if the patient is disabled, then they do send physiotherapists or even attendants to help the patient. So in Conclusion, I am very happy that I was wrong when I said the society was not required and really pleased at the position we are in and I'm sure one day when we find the cure of the disease, this society will come in for recognition because of the work they had done when the disease was incurable. I uh, forgot to mention uh, something in which I have done some amount of research. Very early in my practice, I had noticed that members of my community, the Zoroastrians, the Parsis, were suffering from multiple sclerosis in greater numbers compared to the rest of the population of the city of Bombay. Initially, I think it was not believed, but laterally, epidemiological studies and uh, research has shown that the prevalence amongst this community is 25 to 30 per 100,000, when as I said, 
it's about five, maybe seven per 100,000 today in the other communities. I also want to appeal to the public to come forward in every way to support the society by way of funds, by way of sponsorship, by way of uh, having, a, a, by way of uh, organizing events like the marathon or like the walkathon to collect large amount of funds because with these funds there will be a welcome support for patients with disease especially among the poor who are affected by this disease as much as the well to do and without this help their life will be shorter that's for sure